We are one Around the world and the universe We are one ناظرین دل اپنا پاکستان کے ساتھ انتخاب احمد آپ کی خدمت میں حاضر ہے ناظرین ہم وینکوور کی سرگرمیاں لے کر آپ کی خدمت میں حاضر ہیں وینکوور میں خاص طور پہ جو ساؤتھ ایشین کمیونٹی ہے وہ کافی متحرک ہے وہ اس کا اور کینیڈین گورنمنٹ کو یہ باور کرانا چاہتی ہے کہ کینیڈا جب ہیومن رائٹس کے ساتھ کھڑا ہے تو دنیا بھر میں وہ ایک طرح سے ان ہیومن رائٹس کو کیوں نہیں دیکھتا جہاں پہ ہیومن رائٹس کا کا پامال کیے جا رہے ہیں اور وہاں خاص طور پہ اب انڈین آکوپائڈ کشمیر میں جو حال ہے وہ اس کا تو پوری دنیا کو اب میڈیا میں پتہ چل گیا ہے یو این جو ہے وہ پتہ نہیں کس وقت عمل درآمد کرائے گی اپنی قراردادوں پر اور اس کے ساتھ ساتھ یو این میں ابھی تک کوئی موو ایسی نہیں چلی ہے جس کی وجہ سے کچھ ایسا ہو سکے کہ وہاں پہ کرفیو کے حالات جو ہیں وہ صحیح ہو جائیں اور اس سے ہیومینٹی ہیومینٹی کا جو ایشو ہے ہیومینیٹیرین بیسس پہ وہاں پہ بہت ساری جو ہیں دوائیں خوراک اور انہیں شیلٹرز اور علاج علاج وغیرہ کی کوئی سہولیات میسر نہیں ہیں لوگ کافی ڈیسپریٹ ہیں باہر کی ہیلپ کے لیے اور ہم امید کرتے ہیں کہ خاص طور پہ اقوام متحدہ کچھ کرے گی اس سلسلے میں تو اسی سلسلے میں ممبرز آف کشمیر کوالیشن کمیٹی نے ایک ایمرجنسی کمیونٹی فورم ہیلڈ کیا یہاں سر ایم بی سی میں جس میں الیکٹڈ ممبرز آف پارلیمنٹ بھی تھے ان میں سر فہرست مسٹر رائے کین ہارڈی سک طالیبال وغیرہ تھے اور جن لوگوں نے اس کمیٹی میں اس میں حصہ لیا ان کے نام کچھ اس طرح ہیں الجامع مسجد وینکوور بی سی گوردوارا کونسل کمیٹی آف پروگریسو پاکستانی کینیڈینس ایسٹ انڈیا ڈیفینس کمیٹی فرینڈز آف پاکستان کینیڈا ایسوسیشنس گلوبل پیس الائنس سرے گلوبل پیس سوسائٹی انڈین ابراڈ فار پلورسٹ انڈیا کشمیریز ان بی سی مسلم اسٹوڈنٹ ایسوسیشن پاکستان کینیڈا ایسوسیشن پاکستان کینیڈین وومن سوسائٹی پاکستانی کینیڈین کمیونٹی ایسوسیشن پاکستان کلچرل پاکستانی کینیڈین کلچرل ایسوسیشن پاکستانی یوتھ کاؤنسل اسٹینڈ وتھ کشمیر ورلڈ بیانڈ وار اینڈ ینگ اما ناظرین خاص طور پہ بات یہ ہے کہ مجھے بڑے دکھ سے کہنا پڑتا ہے اس میں موسٹلی موسٹلی جو ہیں ہماری جو ایسوسیشن ہیں وہ نہیں آئیں اور یا جو کچھ لوگ آئے بھی تو وہ اپنے ٹائم پہ نہیں آئے تھے لیکن اتنے بڑے مسئلے پہ ہمیں چاہیے تھا کہ ہم سب لوگ وہاں پہ جمع ہوتے اور اپنی ایک آواز بن کر پوری دنیا کو دکھاتے تو اسی طرح سے وہاں پہ جو یہ جو ہیں کیا نام ہے کارڈ بک پرائم منسٹر کو کارڈ لکھے گئے اسی ریفرنس سے اور وہ کارڈ تقریباً سینکڑوں میں تھے جو کہ الیکٹڈ ممبرز آف اسمبلی کو دیے گئے اور وہ پھر ان سے کوشچن آنسر کا سلسلہ بھی جاری رہا لوگوں نے اپنے کنسرن بتائے تو میں اب آپ کو اس کی تفصیل دکھاؤں گا دیکھتے رہیے وینکوور کی جان دل اپنا پاکستان which is which is thank, thankfully a much improved statement but at the same time this still does not acknowledge that 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 Canada is actually taking a stand on this issue to us that is very uh, frustrating because at the end of the day what's happening in Kashmir is not right I think we need a stronger stance from our government which stands up for human rights um, so yeah that's uh, what I have to share with everyone here thank you بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم لیڈیز اینڈ جنٹمین برادر اینڈ سسٹرس السلام علیکم دس ایوننگ وی آر ہیئر فار ون آف دا ریزن ایز ون آف اوور کشمیری برادرس 
He shows concern from the deep of his heart. And we are with them. With all the movements of your life, we, that's, that's the support you have it. And first of all, I would like to thank our honorable MPs, Mr. Sukh Daliba, Mr. Randeep Sarai, and Mr. Ken Heidi. You took time this evening from your busy schedule, and you're here. And also, I would like to thank all of our other friends from the other communities. Your presence here speaks very loud for us. Thank you very much for coming here tonight. Your, you are really honorable for us. Your presence speaks very clearly for us that we are all together. And this evening, our cause, our sport is for our Muslims. And again, there are some disciplines which I would like to lay out for tonight evening. This is not a political gathering. We might have a liking or disliking for the different parties, but I would humbly request, respect the time, respect the guest. They are here for our cause. They are not here for any political gatherings. So we would not allow any brother or any person who bring have any other concern than the Kashmiri issues. So as for Khan tell that the, everybody will be given one minute of the time. So respect your time because quarter after nine is Azan time. And we would, uh, inshallah, in between, we will try to cover, to show our discipline, that we are a disciplined nation. And we will try to wrap up everything before the time. And then we have enough time for our question answer as well. Once again, thank you, for, thank you very much for your coming here. And I really appreciate all of you being here. Okay, thank you, Asabai and uh, Jose. So with Canada's silence, or relative <coughs> silence, uh, as Jose described, we came out with a, a card, a petition, which had some specific asks of the Canadian government directed to the Prime Minister. And over the past few weeks, we've collected uh, 2,500 of these, which have already been mailed out. And then we, uh, we started another collection, and we actually have thousands of these now, and, uh, and we will present those to the, to the MPs uh, in, in, uh, in a few minutes. The five actions that, uh, that are being asked in this is, well, if Canada wants a seat on the UN Security Council, then it needs to, to uh, abide by and respect and speak up for past UN Security Council resolutions, specifically, especially the ones related to Kashmir. In fact, Canada was a, on the Security Council in 47 and was a signatory of one of the uh, UN resolutions, number 47, which asked for a plebiscite in Kashmir. So if you want a, a seat on it, well, we need to follow that. So that's one of the points that we ask. Another one is the human suffering. We already talked about that. If Canada supports human rights, it should speak for it. And it should not pick and choose what part of the world which human rights they're going to speak for and which they're not. It doesn't matter. Human rights are being violated, whether it's Hong Kong or Kashmir. Canada should speak up. And the fourth point, Canada has always had a reputation as an honest broker, and we've kind of drifted away from that. So we, we would like Canada to step up and be an honest broker, a peace builder, and not look at trade as a, as a, a restriction or a, a deterrent to speak up and, and do the right thing. And the fifth thing on the card is we would like the, the Prime Minister of Canada to talk to the leaders of both countries with reference to the points uh, referred to, and, and de-escalate the situation, play a, play a leading role and, and, and resolve this, similar to how Canada resolved the Suez crisis in 1952, and the, the Prime Minister at that time won the Nobel Peace Prize. So that's the Canada we want to see, and that's what we're asking, and we've got thousands of people that have signed these cards. We were short on time because of the rate dropping, and if we had a few more weeks, we would easily do four times more or even more of these cards. So with that, I'm going to ask uh, Jose and Mujib to hand over the cards uh, that we have signed to the respected MPs.
So these, these cards, as they're handing them over, uh, they, they, we had a grassroots network of organizations and people all over Metro Vancouver that went out and got these cards filled. So it was a, it was a great collaborative effort. These are not specific to Surrey, they're over all of the Metro Vancouver area. And now, now we're going to move on to all the respected uh, organizations, part of this grassroots network, part of this collaboration, where although many of these organizations, they might have some differences in how they view things, or some things that they agree with or don't agree with, we all came together and still figured out how to work together on something that everybody agreed with, which is the, the situation in Kashmir and what Canada must do for them. And so with that, I'm going to go through this list and I'm going to ask uh, Malik Saab, where is Malik Saab? He's going to have the microphone with him. He will bring the microphone to the representative for the organization and you'll have one minute, uh, exactly one minute and we're going to try and stick with that. Okay, he will be the timer. So Mujib will be the timer and he'll signal to you. So first, uh, first of all, I want to call up a uh, representative from, from uh, BC Gurdwara Council. Um, Malik Saab, can you take the mic for them? And just please state your name and give your one minute statement or question. Thank you. Uh, my name is Vinendar Singh and uh, thank you for uh, calling this forum. Um, I just wanted to say that where there's a victim, uh, there's also a perpetrator. So as important as it is to name the victim in this case, it's just as important not to fear naming the perpetrator. Uh, the government of India has responsibilities to all of its people. Uh, and they failed in that responsibility repeatedly when it comes to especially Kashmir and in our situation in Punjab as well. Uh, it has to be the people of Kashmir that dictate their own future and we stand side by side with them and support them in whatever movement that they actually put forward. Uh, 70 years of occupation in Kashmir, uh, we the Sikhs of Punjab understand your pain. Everything from the torture, the forced disappearances, the rape, the genocide, we, the Sikhs of Punjab, also share a similar fate uh, over the last 30, 40 years ourselves. Uh, our resistance uh, as a people is where our victory lies. That all of this that we've endured is a symbol of our victory and our con continued resistance will eventually lead to victory. And I just wanted to kind of state that the BC Gordoras Council is a local society made up of local Gordore. We wanted to just make sure that we stand with you, we understand your pain and suffering, and we will stand with you until this issue is resolved which, God willing, will be in the near future. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Next, I'll call upon East Defend East India Defense Committee. My name is Harpan Chima. I'm a secretary of the East Defense Committee. And uh, we had a meeting yesterday in the Surrey. 400 people came. And we concluded with, we made a revolution. I'm going to just uh, share with you. Number one, we condemn most viciously the occupation of Kashmir people by the Indian state. Number two, we demand unconditional and immediate restoration of Article 370 and 35A. We demand that the occupying army of Indian state must be withdrawn immediately. All the political prisoners should be released. We support the right of Kashmiri people for self-determination and up to succession. And last point, victory to the Kashmiri people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and you will see Indians abroad for pluralist India. Good evening, everyone. My name is Gurpreet Singh. I'm a spokesman for Indians abroad for pluralist India. This group was formed in response to the growing attacks on religious minorities in India ever since Modi became the Prime Minister in 2014. I'm very delighted to see three MPs here, but unfortunately, we have been raising this voice for the last many years, and the actions of Canada are not loud enough. They need to do more. It's good that they are here, but this message should be sent to the Prime Minister of Canada, and he should step in and call spade a spade. There have been a, there is a pattern under which, uh, ever since Modi became the Prime Minister, minorities are being attacked, political dissidents are being uh, arrested and thrown into jails, including Professor G. N. Sai Baba, Delhi University professor who is disabled below the waist, and he's been incarcerated. We have been raising these issues with the Canadian government, but they never ever took any interest. So I'm very sorry to say that Canada is not doing enough. We need to make them do something. And also, it's very unfortunate that the BC NDP government remains quiet. 
although I don't want to bring this up, but my wife, who is an MLA from Surrey Green Timbers, she couldn't make it, but she has sent her message to express her solidarity with the people of Kashmir. There is one MLA from of Pakistan region in Alberta from NDP. He has taken a strong stand. Jagmi Singh has taken a strong stand. But liberals need to do more. Thank you so much. Thank you. And next is the Turkshil Cultural Society of Canada. Okay, they, they, they might have left early. There was one group that said they have, had to leave early. So we'll continue. So first of all, I want to thank all of these four organizations are from our, our friends the, in the Indian community and thank them for, for their support. <laughs> Next, uh, there's a few peace groups involved. One is Global Peace Alliance of Surrey. And uh, I, I believe uh, Niobe, Thank you. Good evening. My name is Niobe Patsikakis. On behalf of Surrey Global Peace Alliance, I would like to stand up for the people of Kashmir. We are saddened and horrified at the events there. We know this for sure for any nation, leader, regime, or person that is in violation of human rights and involved in killings and torture of even one human being, our message is clear, it must stop. We want them to show humanity and we want everyone to focus on the preservation of our planet and all its living forms through peaceful coexistence. The world must stand up for human rights. The current government needs to firmly communicate to Indian authorities that Canadians find these actions unacceptable. We are hopeful that this situation will be resolved peacefully. The members of the Board of Global Peace Alliance are a mixed group from different community and political affiliations. We come together in unity and proud to be part of Surrey's multicultural, multi-ethnic, multi-religious community and hope we can reflect who we are across the world and to India especially. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Sir Yankal, good evening. My colleague Neovi has said enough. I just want to, enough has been said about the Kashmir condition, atrocities, Indian government and Modi regime has done. So, it is very clear, the world knows and it's been media, all media known. Only sad part, I want to say that we are seeing a Hitler coming and the Nazi regime coming and we request all of our respected MPAs and leaders, that please take our message to Ottawa, that please play the role we expect from Canada, the role we proud of the Canadian government. Please stop the atrocities and raise your voice. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. So that uh, Sister Rebecca with War Beyond War. <coughs> Assalamu alaikum and welcome. Um, as a member of World Beyond War, our mission is to resolve issues justly and peacefully with the, hopes of ab with the hopes of the absence of warfare. Because Canada has always been known for its peacekeeping and lately straying away from that path by selling arms trades to regimes that we know violate human rights, we are asking our Canadian government to take a lead role in striving for peace. We would like to be assured that our government will not be involved in selling any arms trades to India or any other nation that will be used against the people of Kashmir. Thank you. Thank you, Adiga. Is, uh, is Haroon Khan here from Al Jamia Masjid? He's running late. He's running late. Then, uh, Shokat Khan, do you want to sure. talk to them? Assalamu everyone. My name is Shokat Khan. I serve the community as sitting president of PCA, Pakistan Canada Association. Kari Abdul Wahab Saab, Chair and Mohandasa, thank you very much for opening the doors. Really thankful to my brothers, Radeep Sarai, Ken uh, and uh, Sukh who are there. And again, you are our government. We voted for you and we are going to we'll vote for you again. Um, Justin is our leader and hopefully he's going to be leader again. It's not that we are not hearing from liberals only. We are not hearing from anybody in Canada. Canada is known for speaking up to the atrocities around the world. We have taken bold steps, like in case of Saudi Arabia. 
We have taken bold step wherever there was a need. We need you to speak up. We need you to stand up for us and for Kashmir. Uh, brothers have already talked about Kashmir a lot, uh, but this is the time because I know the elections are coming in October, two months, and we want to make sure that you have all the votes. Uh, but as uh, we all know that Canada does the right thing. Canada will stand up for any atrocity out there in the world. You know, in person when we talk about, you always support that cause, but what we want you to do is have our leader, Justin Trudeau, who is going to be our leader forever. He is doing the right thing. He is our leader, and he is a very uh, a compassionate person, but we want him to speak up. This is the time we need him. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, I believe, uh, is anybody here from Canadian, uh, progressive Pakistani Canadian group? Okay, I think uh, Shazad was not able to make it, so we'll go on to the next one. Friends of Pakistan Canada Association, Brother Al. Assalamualaikum, my name is Abdul Rauf. Good evening, Sorry. Uh, There was enough talk regarding Kashmir. I, I have only a few minutes, maybe a one minute to talk. The only reason I'm asking my other MPs, like sitting MPs, why is it taking too long for you uh, to uh, write on a statement, like the Canadian government? Uh, why is it taking too long? It's a human rights issue. It's not nothing to do with India or Pakistan. And I'm also really uh, pissed off because only Ken Hardy and John Alder attended our rallies. None of the other MPs attended our rallies. So there should be uh, something like it's not nothing to do with India and Pakistan. It's a Kashmir issue and a human rights issue. Where there is a human rights, we should stand up with that. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Is any representative from one of the MSAs here? Okay, so we'll, we'll continue. We okay, yes, go ahead. Yes. Real quick though, just stay within our one minute. Just raise your hands when I'm 10, minutes, ten seconds left. <clears throat> um, dear respected brothers and sisters, I'm actually a Uyghur, and you guys all know the situation that's happening in East Turkestan. I don't need to mention because everything that was said has been happening to us for the past two years. What I am trying to say is when you look around, who do you see? It's just, you guys, unfortunately, all we see is Desis. And is the Kashmir issue a Desi issue? And we can all agree that it's not the Desi issue, it's not a Pakistan issue, it's not a India issue, it's not a you know a brown person issue. It's a it's a multinational issue. The Uyghur situation is not everyone issue. The Yemeni situation is every everyone issue. And unfortunately, one of the reasons that you don't see other, other people here is because there's no collaboration. So I believe truly that in order to push forward with the Kashmir issue, we have to collaborate with each other. The Uyghurs have to come to the Kashmir events. The Kashmiris have to come to the Uyghur events. We have to go to the Hong Kong events even. It doesn't matter if they're not Muslims, your brothers and sisters. It's humanity. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and I'll reiterate that's a wonderful, wonderful point. We have some collaboration here, but we need to increase it even more. So we have started down that path, and we do realize that, and that is our ultimate goal. Uh, Pakistan Canada Association, I, I don't think Haroon is here and Brother Shok has already spoke. So, Pakistani Canadian Community Association, uh, any representative here? And that's again, let's stay within our minute and stay on topic. Thank you very much. Uh, Asalaamu As Alaikum, everybody. And uh, I especially thank to the uh, representative from the Liberal Party and from the government to be here to listen to our concerns. I think these are very, very serious concerns, not just to Kashmiri, to the Pakistani, this is the uh, concerns, and this is danger to the uh, international regulation, to the uh, human rights uh, along uh, in the globe, and also world peace. Because uh, as far as I see it, uh, as uh, we had a terrorism in the uh, uh, Pakistan and other area, and it was a uh, spreading very fast and Pakistan part with the international partners with the Canada with the other uh, partners peace partner in the world so we want the same similarly the Canada and the other work with the uh, Pakistan with the Kashmiri and and fight against the sectarian and uh, terrorist Hindu phenomena which is very uh, rapidly developing and which is danger to the world peace and uh, and and this is and and you just imagine what can happen as a result of these two nuclear powers are there they are in front 
and if anything happens yeah. and yeah. One minute. One minute. so so I would just ask and request to everybody this is not just Pakistan and Kashmir issue this is the humanity we want to safeguard the uh, civilization the human civilization and the human rights and the constitution of the India and One minute, the human please. and international charter <laughs> Uh, is there a rep from Pakistani Canadian Cultural Association? Yeah, I believe they had an event, so I was told that they're not quite not make it. So we'll go on to Pakistani Canadian Women Society. Is there anybody here that can speak on their behalf? Okay, we'll keep moving on. Pakistani Youth Council. Okay, we'll keep going. Last one, Young Oma. Anybody from that group? Okay, they're not around here right now, so we'll just continue. Now we can give the Two more last two groups, uh, Kashmiris in DC. Uh, so I'm going to hand it over to. Mayu? Sure. <coughs> Um, hello everyone, my name is Hamayo. I'm one of the uh, Kashmiris here from the Indian Occupied Kashmir. I was born in Kashmir and I moved here in 2015. I mean, it's one thing for everybody to say how it is to be in Kashmir, but it's another thing to live in those crises, which I have and so has Jose. It's not that easy, to be very honest, because um, you are under a threat 24-7 whenever anything happens. And it's pretty hard to explain or get in front, like how it goes for our day-to-day -day life, how we spend our days, how we get our groceries, how how careful we have to be even to breathe there. Like in occasions like our festival Eid, which we celebrate everybody with happiness, we have to be careful to not get out of the house after certain hours, because you can be mistaken and then, and nobody would even know where you were found dead or whatever. That's, that, that has happened in Kashmir in the past 22 decades, I would say. I was born in 1990, that's when it all started. So believe me when I say it's not really easy. But I'm really thankful that you all are here. We really appreciate and we really appreciate everybody speaking out for Kashmir for these very grave concerns that all Kashmiris that don't have a voice and we have become their voice and we have to. We, we conducted a couple of rallies here in Vancouver, which lasted... Amaya, we need to move on. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I would like to thank everybody, and especially you. Thank you very much. Okay, we're going to quickly move on. Time come, so we would like <laughs> yeah, we are, that's where we're going. We're going to our MPs. Once again, thank, thanking them for coming on a very short notice, and I believe uh, Randeep even had to cancel an event to make it here. the Honorable Sukhtaliwal. Assalamu alaikum, Sassikal, good evening. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for organizing uh, this forum here. Uh, to me, uh, protecting human rights is the fundamental, single most responsibility of any government. And that is the reason I chose Canada to be my country, and I chose to get involved in the politics. When I came to Canada in January 1984, you know, recently passed legislation, you know, Charter of Rights and Freedom, which was brought in by the Liberal, then Prime Minister Pierre Elliott Trudeau, and was implemented. And that single document that's enshrined in our Constitution makes us different than the other nations that we are talking about today because it gives everyone an equality, it's a diverse nation, and it gives everyone an individual rights. And that, when it comes to protecting the freedom of people and protecting the human rights, in the last four years, I can tell you that our government has stood by that. And we were going through the last election this period, and we all heard the human rights situation in Syria. We made a promise and we brought in refugees and we made them to settle. 
and then the Rohingya crisis came in. Similarly, you know, it is our government that appointed a special envoy of Bob Ray to come up with a report and suggestions. Three hundred million dollars was put it in to help those. Human rights, whether it's happening in India, Pakistan, or here in Canada, we should all be concerned. And when it comes to my personal record, it's very clear. If someone has brought in a, a petition to move it forward, I have always, always delivered that to the parliament, irrespective where the other MPs at that time were thinking and what were doing. And, uh, and good Peter, uh, you mentioned about a, a, a issue that, that is very near and dear to you. When you came in and you gave me that petition, I had the courage to take it to, to the House of Commons. And similarly today, we got these cards here, and Prime Minister is usually here quite often, every month, and hopefully he comes here in the, in the near future and we would be uh, you know, able to deliver this. Your voice, we are only strong when you are strong on the ground. Now we can see that it's happening all united, and I'm sure that um, my colleagues, uh, Ken Hardy and Randeep, and others will stand alongside with Kashmiri people to deal with this issue. Thank you. And I want to mention to you, and I'm in touch with the minister as well, in fact, I, when I talked to you last night, I wrote to her then, and I have been in, in contact with her since that as well. So we'll keep on doing that. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, and again, congratulations for everybody for pulling this together, but for keeping the sustained effort. You know, a rally, you know, flags, banners, noise, one thing but it's what you do the next day and the next day and the next day. Sometimes it takes patience and persistence. You've got it, so keep it up. A couple of things. The flow of opinion in the world right now must be concerning to good, reasonable people in India. They are being coupled with China and Russia, whose international behavior has uh, troubled a lot of people. And for Mr. Modi to be put on stage next to Mr. Putin and uh, the, the Chinese president. Um, I'm sure that there are a lot of people in India who are finding that somewhat difficult. That should be reinforced. Uh, in the statement that I put out in August, I suggested that Pakistan has to be recognized for its leadership, for its restraint. It has uh, endeavored that it will not you know, take military action. It quelled a protest just the other day that threatened to get out of hand. Most importantly, Pakistan has done what we would expect all nations to do under this circumstance, and that is to go to the United Nations. This is where Canada operates as well. The secret is to get like-minded nations together. And sometimes the diplomacy is quite quiet. Sometimes you don't get somebody to make the change you want them to do by calling them out publicly. But you should know from the example of Venezuela, from the example of Myanmar, uh, the example of Crimea, and the example of the Ukraine, that there's a limit. That Canada will exercise that quiet diplomacy before we step forward, not just with the statements, but also with very clear, tangible action. Action that will restrict economic activities of foreign nationals that we believe uh, could be responsible for human rights abuses. In the statement that I put out in August, I suggested that one avenue that needs to be explored is with the Supreme Court of India. Because the change that was made and the way that it was made in the Indian Parliament really does need to be challenged. And I can tell you today that I have connected with an advocate in the Indian Supreme Court who is willing to take this on. She just needs resources. So 
this is something that we can discuss offline, right? Because uh, I'll, I'll just read you what this person said. The decision of our government is not only unconstitutional, but also unsustainable on various counts. That's, she goes into more detail, which I can share with your leadership, but the fact is that you have a friend there, a friend that's willing to take this cause up. So, yes, we can do all these other things, but she was very interested to hear that her brothers and sisters here in Canada are grieved and damaged and injured by what's going on, and she's willing to help. So let's open up that channel as well, because if it's shown that India and the Indian government does not respect the rule of law in its own constitution, in its own nation, then the condemnation from the rest of the world has to follow, and it has to be very strong. Thank you. Thank you. We are with you on this first Kashmiris who are challenging it in the Supreme Court. Uh, my concern is that the Indian Supreme Court traditionally has been very hesitant to act against majority governments. And there has been legal precedent for that. So I have little faith in the Indian judicial system when it comes to challenging a majority government that has absolute uh, power because they are very protective about their own rights. And I can point you to countless uh, conversations by constitutional experts in India which uh, advocate this. So. Um, yeah, it has been challenged, um, uh, but I have uh, very little hope of the Indian judiciary at this point. But today the fundamental question is why Canada is silent, why our Prime Minister is not speaking up? Can, can, we, can we continue and then we'll open up the forum? Uh, thank you uh, for having us here, and I, I'm not going to repeat what my uh, colleagues already say, and I'm in agreement with them, uh, so can Ken. Uh, so I'll just elaborate that uh, as a member of parliament, our first job is to our constituents. And when we hear these concerns and issues, uh, we immediately act. So when uh, Farquhar and others uh, came to us with this concern, obviously we also watched it from the news on our own sources, but we brought that up with our minister immediately, uh, uh, told her, made contact. She actually contacted, I think, each one of us uh, separately as well as uh, countless other members of parliament uh, across this country to find out what the diaspora, Kashmiri diaspora is feeling, what are they hearing, what are their concerns. That was our first and foremost. Uh, the second is always to find out what Canadians are there and what are their uh, risks immediately. As a Canadian government, that's uh, of utmost importance. And I believe there's been a dozen, uh, there's about a dozen uh, Canadians that are in the region and that was the safety and concern for them was monitored immediately. The third is, uh, what do we do next? And my understanding is there's some uh, quiet diplomacy being happening right now. Sometimes we have to try those angles, uh, being loud, yes, I, we can all do statements. Uh, uh, it could also sometimes switch a mode where the government doesn't react at all. Uh, our concern is to push for your rights and benefit the people. We may not get the most brownie points on that. We may not get the most uh, 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 accolades for that. But I can tell you, Christia Freeland is no, uh, uh, no lightweight. She takes on some of the biggest uh, challenges in the world. Uh, f uh, from uh, Putin to others. Uh, she's not shying away from this. She's working, she's monitoring, and in fact she contacts us on a regular basis to find out what concerns or anything else we have heard. So we will convey even today, we will convey uh, exactly what you uh, have put on these 2,500 plus uh, postcards. Uh, we will convey the message in solidarity from the other communities uh, that have given them, and we are not uh, excusing ourselves by any means on this, and we're monitoring it very closely. I can tell you honestly, you can see our track record in the last four years, whether it was Myanmar, whether it was the Naqab during the election, whether it was the public safety report, any time a Muslim brother or sister uh, was a target, uh, we have defended them, especially in Canada and internationally. In fact, we were the leaders when it comes to Myanmar, and we'll always stand by that. Thank you. 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 Uh, before we open it up to the floor, I actually missed one of the groups, so I'm going to ask uh, Sister Mawish there to real quickly. Uh, can somebody take the mic to her? Uh, just uh, real briefly, can you, within a minute? Assalamu alaikum, everyone. My name is Mawish Yusuf. Um, I appreciate uh, all the uh, respected MPs and the uh, rest of the community uh, to come for this event. Um, I'm really disappointed um, about how Canada is acting with this situation and um, I think Canada should take a lead role. 
uh, and try to resolve this issue. This ha issue has been pending for several years. And um, I think uh, we have a very short window. We have a uh, UN meeting coming. And if the, a statement uh, here and there, uh, some of these postcards, I don't think they're, they're going to resolve Kashmir issue. I mean, I, I, I could be wrong, but I, I really don't see it happening. All of, I, I would like all of the candidates who are coming up, um, uh, who are going to be nominated for the elections to take an active role, push the governments, push other international bodies to take an active role. We have to come together you know, uh, and work for all human rights violations. And right now, this is a burning issue. So uh, I, I really want you, uh, everyone, to take an aggressive thank, thank and- you, uh, sister. Uh, one minute, please, and then open to the floor. If you have a question after Arun's done, raise your hand and the mic will come to you. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, uh, PCR to you, and uh, PCR to you all. Thank you, Minister, for coming. Thank you for coming. Uh, today uh, marks the day of Ashura. It's a day of sacrifice. This is a day that is very sacred for Muslims all over the world. Uh, where, where Muslims were massacred, and it marks a time of tyranny, oppression, injustice. And uh, many people fasted today. They fasted today and they sacrificed today that those before them uh, had made. And, and the, the, the terrible sacrifice of laying down your life for freedom. That kind of sacrifice is happening today in Kashmir. It's happening in flashpoints all over the world, but today we are here to talk about Kashmir and what Canada can do to go and help, to help the people and help ourselves by being the peacemakers, by regaining the stature that Canada has, not just as an elected person, but as a citizen. I'm a Canadian. I am a Canadian and I am proud of this country. And I am more proud of this country when we take that, when we take that initiative, when we take the initiative to stand up for what's right, to help people, when, uh, when injustice comes. You talked about Myanmar and Bob Ray's work there. Tremendous work. We need a fact-finding mission in India. Kashmir is under siege. Kashmir is under media blackout. People are disappeared. Uh, mass detentions. These are real fundamental breaks of human rights. This is happening now and today. And this is so important for the government of Canada to take that lead, to take that center stage, and for ordinary Canadians not just to fill a postcard, but to go and um, get out there and let other people know and shine a light on this situation. Because if this, if we allow this to happen, it can happen anywhere. Thank you. 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 So, your respective brothers and sisters, please, this, the, the, this does not end here. It begins here. So let's keep it going. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay, with that, uh, we'll open it up to the floor. If you have questions, raise your hand and Malik Saab or Dr. Zamka will... You just let me know. Yeah. So, brother, I would again request, this is not a political forum. Please, just question regarding the Kashmir issues. Only Kashmir issue. Only thing we want to know from the world for Kashmir issue it should be solved the same way East Timur and Darfur. That issue was solved very quickly in East Timur in Indonesia and Sudan <coughs> Darfur. So Kashmir been waiting for the same way for the last 22 years. So our humbly request to the world and UNO and International Board of Justice to solve this problem in a similar way. Very good point. Very good point. Does anybody want to respond to that or should we just hear a bunch of questions? No, let's let get the question. Okay. Is that what? Okay, Malik Sahib is Sobat Wadi. My name is Peter Sahib from Malik the Miracle Media. Uh, my eternal question is this one. Why the G5 nations are waiting? Is there anything going on like 100 to 5 years before when the first world war started? What happened? What the end of that 1945? at the bombing of the Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Uh, they, they are waiting another Hiroshima and Nagasaki in that region? That's my question. Uh, before Malik Sahib, uh, just one sec. Uh, Lamp, raise the hand. Shamim Sahib, you're behind. Shamim Sahib, you're behind. Okay, anybody else? Okay, go ahead, Malik Sahib. Assalamu alaikum.
Good evening. My question is uh, to the MP, and particularly Ken Hardy, that you named so many countries. I would say that we do not need a silent diplomacy. We need loud, clear cut that you have not taken count any name where the Muslim communities in the world they were under siege, atrocity, and oppressions, and why. Canada is not speaking loud on this. That what we need. And we ask you, when you have a session, so please put this thing on the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Green Bay. So anybody else has questions, just make a line. Let's keep please it to the point. And again, I'm addressing this to uh, Mr. Baliwak and Hadi and uh, primarily uh, insisting that you take this uh, issue in the upcoming federal debate that's going to happen soon. And hopefully, at least the debate will highlight their genocides. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, uh, for arranging, uh, coming and arranging this uh, forum. I have a question direct from uh, Sukh Dhaliwal. Sukh Dhaliwal just mentioned that uh, he will take these cards to PM. And the, uh, this, today is an electronic time. We can send this email. Uh, I mean, the, uh, scan them, send them right away to the Prime Minister. We are not waiting for him to come here and you uh, send them. So that's the question. Uh, thank you so much, Jeet. Uh, first of all, uh, I have one question from uh, Brother Prokan. That, uh, have you uh, invited other parties, MPs also, or just Liberals? Number one. Number two, I would like to hear from all our three honorable MPs, what is their point of view on this issue, whether they uh, condemn this act, the, the genocide which is happening in Kashmir or not? Like, what is their personal opinion on this? Uh, I'll answer the question directly okay. to me. In the end, please. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Thank you very much for coming. I know how short notice this was, because I also got it very short notice. Uh, to be completely upfront, I'm the Fleetwood uh, NDP candidate for Fleetwood Court Kells. My name's Annie O'Hanna. I want to answer you, my brother, in terms of, I'm from the Jewish faith, uh, from Morocco. And I want to tell you that as a community activist, as an educator, uh, you know, as another person stated, to go to all the events, right? Not just events, to talk to people, Rohingyan, Uyghurs, Palestinians, etc. This is very important. So all I want to say is that to urge you to act in solidarity together, and to really I would say to the government, any government, I don't care the political stripe, to be more long term, to think about the systemic issues that are rising up here. We are seeing the rise of fascism. We're seeing the rise of constitutions being broken again and again and again, leading to erasure of people. So instead of putting out one fire at a time, let's take all of them on together. And that would be my opinion. This would be the, okay, the question is over. We are passing to Mike to the MPs just for two minutes and then it's we are over for this program. Uh, thank you. The one question that you mentioned to me, uh, 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 we're going to the electronic period. I can tell you I'm well versed and I'm taking all the notes electronic, electronically so that I can send to my staff and I'm willing to, if you give it to me uh, today, we're willing to send it uh, by courier tomorrow as this and it will be delivered the next day. Okay. Good idea. Thank you. Good idea. It's good to be reminded. We can send it so very, so very in the geography. Yeah, it's so just electronic mail can go to. Uh, yeah, so now, yeah. Uh, I'm just going to ask you. Whatever my question. Uh, whatever my question. I'm going to answer your question. I would like to know your personal opinion whether you guys condemn this genocide or not. But when it comes to human rights situation, I have made it very clear that first and foremost responsibility of any government, the fundamental responsibility is to protect the human rights. If human rights are not protected, whether they are at home or they are around the globe, I can tell you that I will not shy away from if and when I get re-elected this issue again stays that then gets solved. I will thank be able to speak. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And actually, right we have to, we have to end the program now. That's why we're here. But right now, you want to
Okay, okay brother and sister, brother and sister, one second. Let we open this forum for the reason, and that reason been heard. So we're gonna call off because 9:15 is on. Jazakallah khair for coming. I would like to thank all of you to be here tonight. I would like to thank all of you to be here, and I would love to thank Brother Malik for arranging, Brother Sister Sadul to arrange, and Brother Tahir for helping us for the entertainment. Thank you. One, one final thing. One final comment. So to the MPs here, the writ is going to be dropped any day now. And so the action that has to be taken must be taken before the writ is dropped. So that's my message that we want to see in the next year or two something come out as a result of this. Otherwise, the, uh, the, the writ will be dropped and, and there's no point until the action is over. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for, you for coming. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. from above no matter where we're from we are one we are one we are one oh, oh, oh. we are one oh, oh, oh. oh canada our precious native land our canada we all work hand in hand when we stand together Build up. 